Hi guys, welcome back to The Art of Server. So today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a bootable USB drive with the full installation of FreeDOS. Now you might be interested in doing this because you want to have a bootable USB drive that can run all the programs you need to run in order to update the BIOS on your motherboard, or if you're in particular, if you're watching my channel, you probably uh, need to flash an LSI controller to IT mode. And I have several videos in my channel that have shown you guys how to flash uh, certain LSI controllers to IT mode. And people have noticed that my USB drive that has all my uh, firmware flashing tools is a little bit different than theirs. And the reason for that is probably because when they look up on uh, Google or wherever uh, to find instructions how to set up a, a bootable USB uh, FreeDOS drive, they probably came across a tool called Rufus. And Rufus is primarily a Windows tool that makes it very easy for you to set up a bootable USB drive with FreeDOS on it. But I think the way Rufus does it, it basically gives you a very minimal uh, basic installation of FreeDOS that does not include a whole bunch of the other programs and utilities that are available with the full installation of FreeDOS. And so, for example, I'm talking about things like grep and awk, which are normally associated with Unix or Linux command line tools, but they're incredibly helpful and useful for searching through text files. For example, you guys might have seen me uh, save the output from a mega CLI command, and there's a whole bunch of text, and you're looking for this one line that includes the SAS address, right? And so instead of scrolling through uh, this long text file, you know, you can run grep to basically just search for that one string. And so these tools are pretty useful if you're doing a lot of things in FreeDOS and people have noticed that, you know, my FreeDOS installation seems to have such commands and yet theirs does not. And that's because they probably have a minimal installation of FreeDOS. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get the full installation of FreeDOS on your bootable USB drive. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is to go to freedos.org slash download and download the latest FreeDOS media, right? So there's a couple different options here. I think the one that we really need is just the, uh, the live CD version and that has the installation program. So you can go ahead and just download this fd13-livecd.zip. And I've already done that ahead of time in preparation for this video. So you'll see that I have this file right here in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract this file all right, so it gives me this folder FD13-LiveCD. Now, if I expand that, you'll see that I have three files in here. And I have a README file there, which is basically some basic instructions. If you're completely new to FreeDOS, I recommend that you kind of take a glance at that. But there are two other files. One is an uh, IMG file, and that, I think, is used for booting systems that have problems booting off of ISO. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to use the ISO file. Now, the way I'm gonna do this is through a virtual machine. All right, so I'm gonna use a virtual machine to kind of glue together a actual hardware USB drive, which is gonna become my bootable USB drive. And I'm gonna use the virtual machine to boot off of this ISO image and basically get it to install on that USB drive. So that's kind of the approach here. And so all I need here is the ISO image. Now you do have to copy this ISO image to whatever location is necessary uh, for your virtual machine program to find it. Okay, so for me, uh, I had to copy it to this folder called uh, var slash var slash lib slash libvert slash uh, ISO images or something like that. Whatever uh, virtualization program you're using might have a different location. And so you have to figure that out and make sure you put this ISO file there. All right, so the next step here is to basically get a virtual machine running. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new virtual machine and I'm gonna pick local install media. And, oh, you know what? Before I finish this, actually, hold on one second. Now, I have two terminals here. One is for me to type in commands. One is for you to kind of see what's going on. And I, I like to see this anyway, but this is basically output of dmessage-w. It just shows me what's going on in the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a USB drive. All right, so one thing we have to do before 
we give this USB drive to FreeDOS is put a partition uh, table on it because FreeDOS tends to freak out if it finds a drive that's completely wiped and has nothing. And so this, you can see that I have over here in the messages, I have a SanDisk Cruiser Glide 3.0 all right, so you guys might be familiar with those drives if you've been shucking those Best Buy drives because sometimes they came for, uh, as a freebie with those uh, purchases. But anyway, those things are useful to have around. And so that's what we're using today. And this is showing up as drive SDH. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check the partition table on SDH because I suspect there's nothing there. Yeah, as I suspected, there's nothing there. So let's go ahead and just uh, MK label, MS DOS. All right, so now I have a DOS partition table on that. And so that's all I really need. I'm gonna let uh, FreeDOS do the actual partitioning, but I need that table in place at least uh, because otherwise FreeDOS will freak out. So if you are doing this, make sure you have this uh, DOS partition table on that USB drive. All right, so Let's go ahead and get back to our uh, virtual machine creation. So for the ISO image, uh, we're gonna pick that FD live or FD13Live.ISO that we downloaded earlier from the FreeDOS.org website. And go ahead and choose that. And it's automatically detected that as a FreeDOS 1.3. Let's move forward. Uh, memory CPU configuration, just gonna leave the default. I don't really need much here. And this is really just a temporary virtual machine to get this created. Now this next step here, where we're adding storage to the virtual machine. We actually don't need this because I'm gonna be using that USB drive. So I'm gonna uncheck that and go forward. Okay, so the next step here is we're about to start the installation, but uh, I need to attach that USB drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Customize Configuration Before Install, and I'll click Finish. All right, so at this step, I'm gonna add hardware, and I'm gonna pick USB Host Device, and you'll see that Cruiser Glide 3.0 drive is showing up right here. I'm gonna select that and click Finish. And now I've added that USB drive to this virtual machine. So let's go over to Boot Options and I'm gonna check that because eventually we're gonna to need to boot off of that. And uh, I'll just move it up and apply this change. And so now I think we can begin the installation. All right, so right here, let me blow this up for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. Scale. All right, so hopefully you can see that on the video a little bit better. I'm gonna move down to the install to hard disk and the hard disk that I'm gonna use is that USB drive. So let's go ahead and hit enter. All right, so here is the FreeDOS installation program. We're gonna go ahead and pick the language of your choice. I'm gonna pick English in my case. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna proceed with the installation and we're gonna say yes to that. All right, so it sees the C drive, which is good news. That means it sees the USB drive because remember this virtual machine has no other drives attached to it. And it says it's not partitioned. So we're gonna go ahead and let FreeDOS do the partitioning and set it up uh, as it sees fit. So I'm gonna say yes to that. Okay, so now in order for that new partition uh, to show up, we're gonna have to reboot FreeDOS again. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, reboot now. Okay, so it's probably not gonna be able to boot because that was the installation, the first run was the installation run. So let me actually, sorry, go ahead and shut this off for a second. Let's go and we got to reconnect um, the live ISO here because that probably disconnected uh, after that initial run. So yeah, okay. So I think that should be good. Let's go back and run this. All right, so here we are rerunning the uh, FreeDOS ISO again. And so again, we're gonna pick install to hard disk, and this time it's gonna have the partition tables it needs, or the, the actual partitions that it created in the first um, boot up. 
Okay, so here we are again. Uh, I'm just going to pick the language. And yes, proceed with installation. And it's not formatted, so okay, yes, please format it. And press key to continue. All right, uh, pick your keyboard layout. I'm just picking uh, US English. Uh, force new boot sector code on drive C. I think yes. I didn't see that option before. Okay, so here is basically the the secret sauce or the, the key difference between a Rufus uh, FreeDOS drive versus the full installation. So here I get to pick the full. So I think uh, free, um, the Rufus tool probably picks the plain DOS system. That's kind of the minimal. And that doesn't include all the other utilities, the things like I was mentioning earlier, like grep and awk and stuff like that. So I'm going to pick full installation, including applications and games. I probably don't need the games, but Hey, anyway, let's just do the whole thing. And do we want to, of course, yes. All right, so now the installation has started. Now, for whatever reason, this does take quite a uh, bit of time for the full installation. Uh, when you're doing just a kind of the basic installation, it goes fairly quickly, but when you do a full installation, this does take quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to let this sit here and run, and then I'll come back to it a little bit later. All right guys, so after quite a while, it's finally done and now we can reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose reboot. And right now it's booting off that uh, ISO image all, all over again. So I wanna shut that down. So let me just turn that off for a second. And I'm gonna remove that ISO image because we should now have FreeDOS installed on the USB drive. And so I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna boot off of the USB drive. Let me just kind of disable the uh, CD-ROM booting. All right, so let's run this and we should be booting off the USB drive now. Oops, okay. And I'll just pick the default, sorry. I think when the uh, virtual machine was shut off, the USB drive was connecting to the host. So that's fine. Okay, I, 
I didn't set up networking yet. But anyway, so yeah, here we are with the free DOS 1.3. And you'll notice that besides the usual, you know, DOS commands, I have things like, um, let's say, I think I can use like grep on, I don't know, let's just look at the, sorry, I don't know what's in this file. So Okay, so like I can use grep to uh, look for path in, right? So now I have these other utilities that normally you would not find in your free DOS installation. And so now I can shut down this, this virtual machine basically, and I can take that USB drive and I can plug it into uh, any machine that you know can boot off of, um, I believe it boots off in, in BIOS mode. So you'd have to, uh, have BIOS booting support, or at least if you have a UEFI machine, like one that has the kind of legacy uh, boot support in it. But anyway, this gives you a full installation of FreeDOS on a USB drive. And then you can just create a folder and put in your firmware flashing tools for your um, LSI firmware or BIOS updates or whatever. And you'll have all the tools that come with the full installation of FreeDOS. So anyway, if you like this video, make sure to give me that thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and you like this sort of stuff, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Also, if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I have the best selection of pre-flashed IT mode HPA SAS controllers for your ZFS, TrueNAS, or Unraid builds. So go check out the link down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.